Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about networking and specifically we're going to set up a simple project using UNet where we can have multiple players just kind of move around and be tracked over the network, connect to LAN games and online games. And I think that's about it. And then eventually I think I'll turn this into a series where we can go through the whole process of building out a multiplayer game or at least a framework for it with the UIs and spawning things and all that other fun stuff. But for now, let's just get started with the basics. So I have an empty scene here. And the first thing I want to do is just create an empty game object and add a component to it. And what we want is the network manager. I'm also going to add the network manager HUD because we're not going to build a UI in this video. But again, later on, maybe we'll replace that, swap it out. And then I'll rename my game object to network manager just to make sure that it matches. I'm going to save my scene too. just call it demo. And let's take a quick look at the network manager. So there are a lot of settings here. The one that we're going to care about right now, though, is the player prefab. We want to be able to spawn a player, have them walk around and have that all translate over the network. Well, first thing we're going to need is the prefab for the player. Now, a lot of the time in a bigger project, this player prefab may not be the actual object of the player that's moving around. It could just be an object where the communications are happening. Um, in this case, we're just going to make it a very simple character, though, that has the everything that we need and is assigned all in kind of one. So let's get started with that. I'm going to create a capsule. So just go game object 3D and capsule. And I'll name it player. And I need to add a couple scripts here. So I need an identity, a network identity. Um, and we want to check local player authority because this is the player's object. It's something that the local player should be controlling every time, not the server. So check that box. Um, and then we need a network transform, just like that. And this just um, passes around the data for the position and rotation. So it's a lot like a transform, but the data is replicated over the network. It's not the fastest and most efficient way to do it. In fact, um, I think later I'll go into an example where we do some stuff to kind of speed this up and smooth it out a little bit more. But for now, I think it works and it gets the point across. So we've got the player kind of set up and I need to turn him into a prefab. So I'm just going to drop him down into the assets folder. Normally I'd have a prefabs folder or something, but this is pretty simple. So I don't really need that. And then I'll delete the player from the scene, select my network manager and assign the player prefab. Now if I save, if I press play, I should be able to create a game, just hit LAN host, and my player was instantiated. You can see him right there. Can't do anything with him yet, so let's uh, fix that up, and then we'll start hooking up other, um, other characters logging in or connecting. So to set this up, we're going to create a new script, and I think I'll call it player mover. Okay, and then uh, the first thing we need to do is change this from mono behavior to network behavior. So just change that, um, control period, and get that using statement for Unity Engine dot networking. Um, fix formatting with control K, control D, get rid of start, and that, and just put the word private there to be consistent. Now, what we want to do is check for input. So we'll just do the, the very basic stuff of it. Let's see, we'll do float horizontal equals input dot get access horizontal. And then we'll do the same for the vertical. And then we want to move the player. So we're going to get a vector three of named movement. And we'll set it to a new vector three of horizontal comma zero for the Y because we don't want to go up and down and vertical. Then we need to move the player. So just do transform.position plus equals movement times time dot delta time times move speed. Just want to put in a movement speed variable so we can adjust how fast these characters move. Oh, didn't want that there. I want that as a field right there. And then add the serialized field attribute. So it shows up in the inspector and give it a default of one. Now this will work, but it's not taking into account something pretty important, which is that we only want the local player actually being able to move this thing. So what we can do is just add a simple check here. We'll do if is local player, 
and then add some brackets around there. And now this will only execute on the local player. So only the local player is moving it. And the clients are all going to get the, um, or the I guess the other players will all get the movement through that network transform. And then we remove these extra using statements, save this off, and we'll attach it to the player. So I'm just going to select the player prefab down here and just drop that player mover script onto it. Put it right there. And we have a move speed of one. I think that's probably good. So let's save. Um, I'm going to press play. Hit land host and we should be able to move around. There we go. We can move. I just want to make sure that works before we do a build. Now we'll go to file and build settings. And then we need to add the current scene. So just adding that demo scene. And then I'm going to hit build and run. I just named it unit, put it in a subfolder called build that I have excluded on my um, source control. And we should get another window popping up in just a moment. Where'd it go? Come on, window. Oh, there it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start playing in the editor. And let me move this game view over here. And I'm gonna host a game on the LAN. And then over here, I will just hit LAN client. And now we should see both working. And if I move one character, it moves on the other. And if I, let's see, shrink this down a little bit and move on the server, we see that it moves for the client as well. So this is kind of good. You might notice though that it's a little bit laggy there and a little choppy there. There are a lot of things that we can do to fix that. Um, one of the easiest and quickest ways is to just um, crank up the network send rate. So if we just turn that up, it's gonna send a lot more data. It's basically gonna send these updates a lot faster. It's not, again, the most efficient way to do it, but it will work for now. So there we go, we can see we've got smoother movement with that cranked up. Now, if I do it on the client, since I haven't rebuilt and I just did this in the editor, that send rate is still low, you'll see that lag. But then on the other one, you see we've got the speed. So what I'll do is just turn that up for now and then um, do another build and that would kind of fix that. But before we go any further, I also wanted to talk about the matchmaking mode. So if you want to use the online matchmaking, there's another step that you need to follow. So you need to go to window and services. There we go. And then you'll get this tab right here and you need to select the multiplayer option. So just click on that. And then it's going to tell you that you need to go to dashboard. So once you hit this, it's going to open up the web page and it looks just like this. So then you give it a number of players per room. I'm just going to set this one to four. And then hit save here, jump back over here. And I think we are good to go. So now with that on, let's see, is everything good? Pro the project's just named UNET. That's why that's showing up there. Um, let's hit play one more time and see if we can do a matchmaker game. So hit enable matchmaker, create internet match. And you can see that the match actually was there and ready to go. Now I can't connect with my client because I need to rebuild it. So let's do that. Go build settings and then we'll do build and run again. And we're just going to build out the updated client with the new networking settings and the um, cranked up slider there for the network send rate. There we go. So let's see, let's hit enable matchmaker, create internet match on the client here or the window build one. And then I'll go into the editor, hit play. And when I hit enable matchmaker, if I hit find, I should see my match right here. Join match default. I can join it and I can move around. And you see here, this is the other one and I'm now playing through the matchmaker. So that's really all you need to get started. Um, and so there's a lot more to it that you can do. Uh, if we wanna spawn bullets or shoot things or send other messages, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. A lot of this stuff is just a couple lines of code and things kinda just magically work. So if you're interested in UNET stuff, please just uh, drop a comment below and I'll, like I said, turn this into a series where I'll talk about you know, how to do all of this plus all the more complicated stuff. Maybe we'll build up a custom UI for the matchmaking because this built-in one is, while it's functional, it's not pretty at all. And we want something nice there. So again, I guess uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you like it. If you did, don't forget to share, subscribe, and hit the thumbs up button. And thanks again.